taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking What's taste up, buds. Taste Buddies? It's the Taste Buds Podcast. The Taste Buds Podcast. Coming to the... The second verse, I don't think. No, no. Well, it's not doesn't if play you, in the song, does it? I don't know. Tim, you fade out usually, right? Yeah, we cut it after the first verse. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah. it goes, uh, yeah, if you, uh, taste buds, taste buds, if you don't want your check, no, if you don't want your boots, they'll take your pants. Something about no. your boots, get your boots laced I, I, up. I know it. I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Uh, I'm forgetting the pay stubs line. If you don't want your purse, they'll take your pay stubs. That's right. Yes. Better better put on your boots to make sure they're laced up. That's right. That's, That's what it, it babe. And speaking of hip hop. Yeah. I just is wanna, that what I was doing? In ref in <laughs> reference in reference to a lot of DMs I've been getting. Okay. About various things taking place around the internet that may or may not sort of be reminiscent of what we do here on this show. Oh, I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah. while we're on the subject of hip hop, I'm gonna quote the RZA from the intro to Side Two, Disc One, oh. of Wu Tang Forever, right before Triumph kicks in. You know what, everybody? It's all right to show love to a dude, but stop biting my shit. Oh, <laughs> nice. <Mwah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Osiris of this shit. <laughs> Taste buds has been here forever, motherfuckers. <laughs> we bomb atomically. All right. <laughs> yeah, a six pack of frosted donuts in a streetcar named Desire. <laughs> <laughs> We're just two guys trying to make our way. I know. What are you going to do? We're getting knocked around by uh, the Food Network the poll. Guns. The Food Network poll what was, was that? insane. That what was, was insane. That? I mean, it's just too coincidental <laughs> that they put peanut butter and jelly against grilled cheese. Peanut butter and jelly versus grilled cheese two weeks after our episode I know, dropped. I know. It was nuts. I know. That was nuts. You got to just, there's so many foods. And <laughs> like, why would you take the same matchup? They're seeing the comments because networks like that, they, they, have, they have a social media person <laughs> that responds to people. They're seeing the comments saying, guys... <laughs> this podcast already did this. <laughs> yeah. They're seeing it and they're just ignoring it. But yeah, whatever. it was right after, which is weird. But hey, I'm, just let's just let's just take this to the, on the road and do a do a Food Network show. Here we go. Yeah, Me, you, we, we're up for hire. Me, Joe, and Pimper for hire. Yeah, Food Network. Yeah, who knows? Move this shit out of my house. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so wait. The other thing we we're going to talk about this. This is. I also thought that this was a bite. But it wasn't a bite. Oh, I love the word bite. Yeah. Sweat. Sweating us? Biting us? Yeah. Sweating our shit. Uh, there's a new candy bar out. Now, we've talked on the show about the greatest candy bar of all time being the Whatchamacallit. Whatchamacallit, hands down. Which, by the way, I watched old vintage uh, Whatchamacallit commercials on YouTube the other night. Yeah. God damn, it has decreased in size in a way that, like, oh, I mean, it's, it like was, half it's outrageous. Size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a shame. It was so big when it first came out that when the kids eating it in the commercial, you can just not, <laughs> even when they're not intending for you to, you can see the inside of it. You can see what's going on in there. That's what. It, that's how much uh, of a, of a cross surface area. Yeah, it yeah, like a, yeah. It was like a, it was bigger than a king current king size. Uh just go with it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I've never seen a king size watch my call it, so I was trying to. They stopped calling them king size too. I think they call them like, like a. Uh, shareables now or something they they remarketed that too uh so there's by the way milky way fudge just to digress for a second milky way fudge just came out and they have a double i follow these snack guys on youtube uh, i think it's called mike's kitchen but they have they're these two dudes who just they, they just sit in this kitchen they just eat snacks and they just tell you if they're good or not oh my god um uh michael ian black and um i'm forgetting his name mike and uh Eat snacks. It was it was a podcast. That's not what this is. Okay, this okay. is pimp. Real Tom, quick, Tom, Mike and Tom. I'm digressing all over the place. I'm going to get back to the whatchamacallit. Go back. Just put in Mike's Kitchen uh, YouTube and see what comes up. I, I want to give these guys a shout out. Nah, that's not it. 
That's Mike's Kitchen on YouTube. Yeah, I know. So, it's, so I'm wrong. It's not Mike's Kitchen. Uh, something snacks. Uh, You're going to search the whole internet with that board of a term, Snacks huh? Kitchen YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's going to come up? Us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Anyway, there is these guys. I got to find them again. Uh, but I, I want to give them a shout out on one of the episodes. But anyway, all they do is they go they go to Five Below, uh, I think Dollar Tree, and Walmart, and they just buy snacks at all three, and then they eat them on camera in their kitchen, and they just tell you if they're good or not. That's <laughs> yes the no. show. That's the show. I love the show. But anyway, they got a Milky Way fudge, which is a new Milky Way. Okay. And the guy made a point to say, when he, t- when he took it out, he goes, look at that. He goes, that's almost the size of a real candy bar. And I was like, what do you mean almost the size of a real? And then he goes, there's two of these in here. And I was like, oh, wow. Milky Way fudge bringing, bringing some size now. This is how they do it now, right? He, what? Because they just read, Pim pulled up, that as of like 2013 or something, they said king-size candy will no longer be made after 2013, says maker of M&M's, Twix, and Snickers. King-size candy bars will give way to products with no more than 250 calories. That's from 2012. That's a crock of shit. Because what they do now is they put two smaller ones in there and say serving sizes too. But the but these were big. I watched them eat them. Really? They weren't small. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I felt like All Milky right. Way kind of delivered with some length and girth. I can't believe I can't believe what you're about to tell me right now. Okay, so a sequel candy bar has been released. We have to get this. To the whatchamacallit. It's called the Who's What's It. <laughs> what? Now, what a name. Here's the it's thing. It's the only possible next name. Pimp, bring up the cover, of, <coughs> excuse me, the picture of the candy. I need a big picture of that candy bar because there's a couple things I got to draw attention to on that wrapper. Okay. So name. I'm in the it's writing. A fun name. It might be fun. I, oh, man, that's up there. That That's right away with what you might call it. Right. Now, I'm in a Rite Aid one day. I see these things, right? I go, Who's What's It? That sounds like what you might call it. There is nothing on the front label of this wrapper to tell you who manufactures it. So I'm going, what is this? Then it says underneath the name, comedy bar named by Lisa M. And I seriously started getting hot inside the Rite Aid. And I'm going, who the, who is this Lisa M broad? <laughs> Acting like she came up with an original candy bar here called a Who's What's It. This is such a bite off a of the whatchamacallit. Call it. Well, then I find out, I finally Google it. I seethe for three weeks about this. And then I finally Google it, and I find out Who's What's It is, in fact, a sequel bar to the, to the whatchamacallit made by the same candy company. And the reason her name is on the front is because they, they... crowdsourced the name? It was a contest to see who won it. And if you, if you named it and they picked you, they put your name on the thing. She didn't guess what they were going to call it. She, no, she gave named them it. the name. Yeah, so she but gets her name on the wrapper. But a who's what's it is in the vernacular, isn't it? Like a what's it call it? Is and a who's he what's it? Like that's not that the first the time I heard the phrase who's he what's it. It isn't. I don't think so. I never heard that phrase. No, that's a no. I've heard that. Is it possible the first time I heard it was when did this come out, pimp? Like, like a couple months ago. No, but I you've heard of I've heard of wait was whatchamacallit call it a thing before the bar was called whatchamacallit? call yeah because you'd go it's a whatchamacallit. call it what you call it that you know I was down at the whatchamacallit. call it the uh, yeah and know. I've heard people in the same vein go uh, who's he what's it not that they do it it might have been like old timey speak but like I don't think who's he what's is a thing I think you're concocting okay. a whole universe of something in what's your head. call it. <laughs> What you call it is in the dictionary. Yeah, used to re- informal noun used to refer to a person or thing whose name one cannot recall, does not know, or does not wish to specify. Right. She wanted me to get the what you call it from her bureau. Yeah, oh, I wonder what, what I wonder what she was talking about in that situation. Yeah, but that That's, was that was the old commercial. <laughs> is that what they're calling it now? The commercial with the kids that I watched was like it was like it was like a I didn't watch the commercial with kids. I wa- the, there were kids. <laughs> There were kids in the commercial. <laughs> it's you and like like a handful of six year olds. But no, the 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 in the commercial that's was the whole gag was it was like a who's on first. The kids like what's that candy bar? And he's like, I remember that. It's a what you call it. And he's like, that. no, I what know. Do you call what do you, it? What's it called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. But wait, 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 wait. Can you see if who's he what's it is in the ditch? I don't think it is, babe. I think I think that that's this is a new thing. 
this is a new, f-. like, that's why they had to have a contest, because they were like, there's no other word. Oh, man, she came up with the who's he, what's it? I've never heard that before. You guys, you guys got to sound off in the comments, and I don't know if I've ever said that before, but, but am I crazy, you guys listening? Like, have you ever heard the phrase who's he, what's it before? This chocolate bar came out a few months I ago. Mean, Who is this Lisa M? I, I'm telling you, I thought it was a lady that just made up a new candy bar on her. I, I thought it was an indie rogue candy bar <laughs> that this lady made up that copied whatchamacallit, but it's not. It's it's actually But what by, is different? It says chocolate, cr- chocolate, chocolate crisps and peanut butter. It's, I think it's... What is different? I think it's a chocolatey version. I think it's like the sister version of the... Like a sister bar to the whatchamacallit. But it's, like the it's same... a chocolatey version of the whatchamacallit. Oh, is it chocolatey? Because they, chocolatey? Well, inside of the whatchamacallit, there's no chocolate to be found. It's all... Correct. So they, I didn't see they said there was chocolate in it, though. 43,000 entries she won. 5,000 bucks. A year supply of Hoosie Watson bars and 5,000 in cash. Well, let me just start to say something here. <laughs> February 2021. You're right. Two months old. Okay. First of all... Is it is it the Mars? Is it Hershey that Hershey got away with? They could have hired. They they probably have an in house marketing. I mean, like I would imagine a firm point. couldn't come up with the who's he what they they got away with their new brand name for five grand. Five grand, five grand. They own it forever. It's, oh, I see. It's chocolate in the middle. It I looks get it. delicious. I I mean, we need to get one of these stat. It looks delicious, dude. I like the way they even... You could tell it's in the same family, though. You can yeah. tell by the font and the writing. It's the same thing. It's just it's just a chocolate crisp version I instead of it. the uh, whatever crisp version. It's going to be fine, but I'm telling you right now, the whatchamacallit is perfect. So I, I don't know, dude. That I feel in recent years, the whatchamacallit has been a little lacking in flavor. Yeah. And I feel like that the extra uh, so chocolate think- crispies might take this thing over the fence because that you know what that looks like it tastes like to me those chocolate eclair ice cream bars the the good humor ones yeah. that have the chocolate bits yeah. on the outside yeah, that's you. what that looks like to me. All right. All Which right. and those things are I mean is there anything more they ju- right? Chocolate eclair I, it's okay. The, the the ice cream bar I mean. Yeah, I still I go that's like my third. I go toasted almond. You get then I drop Hold it on. like it's cold with a strawberry shh. short. Strawberry short. Hold on. I need you to shush. Pip, write that down. The fact that you... That's an episode. Oh, it is a classic good humor bar versus bar. That's an episode. Yeah, that could be an episode. You go to- toasted almond. Let's leave it. Let's just leave it I'll alone. leave it. <laughs> yeah, toasted... Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the, the eclair is my least favorite in that grouping. I want you to leave it alone right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come back to it. Whoa, look at that. That's new stuff. Reese's, the good humor toasted almond, babe. Good humor Pop-Tart brown sugar cinnamon. All right. Gross. We're all over the charts here. One, one thing, though, is that Lisa M. also gets her, her name on the packaging. I wonder for how long that she lasts. She her whole name, Is now. it just for the rollout? Yeah, you don't know who it is, so there's Lisa M. Lisa all M over sounds the world like, fronting. Yeah, in, in Lisa M. <laughs> Lisa M sounds like a freestyle uh, club artist from the early <laughs> 90s. <laughs> Yeah, Lisa M from Queens. Yeah. Please yeah. don't go away from me, boy. <laughs> the love you have. In the... I think that's a regional um, genre. Freestyle music. Freestyle, uh, like TKA, uh, Stevie B. Yeah. Uh, you know, Who's, little, little Susie. Lisa M, if you watch this show by any chance, reach out to us. We'd love to talk oh, to you. Oh, Lisa M, we have you on as a guest. We eat Who's would, He What's It's all day long. I would love to talk to Lisa M. We would love to do the Who's He What's It on the show while we're talking to her for the first oh, time. Oh, man, I can't wait. To, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a Who's He What's It today. I'm going to go to my local grocer. You don't want to wait to see if we can get in touch with Lisa M and eat it with her for the first time? I guess, All right, but fine. the odds of her... Fine, I mean, we'll go get a who's he what's it after. Yeah, but we can still eat, we can still <laughs> eat it with her. Yeah. Freestyle music is a form of hip-hop dance. Is that how you describe freestyle music? I would say a so. Hip-hop dance? I would never describe it that way. Latin hip-hop or Latin pop. I would describe it as Latin, more Latin pop. That originated from the electro-funk of Africa, Bambata, and the Soul Sonic Forces. 1982 seminal track, Planet Rock. Mm. Oh, wow, they're pinpointing that the genre of freestyle music... Was birthed from a singular song. Wow, Latin percussion, heavy syncopation, and themes. I mean, they all sound very similar, but they were in the tri-state area here on the East Coast, in like the 
like, like, what do you want to call it? Late eighties, early nineties. It was big here, but it also too. It's huge on the West Coast too, because you had Egyptian Lover on the West Coast, and you know what I mean. Like, Egyptian Lover. Yeah, you never listened to Egyptian Lover. No, but he's awesome. Oh, he, he, he oh I thought a, it was the name of the song. No, no, no. He was a he was a musician. Really? Or he is a musician. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. You would love Egyptian Lover. And then if you listen to the early Dr. Dre stuff, it's all that kind of stuff. It's all like you know. Yeah, so they're saying freestyle. It did. It just died one day. It was like you know when you like have a like a like a like a like a pair of clothes or a, something hanging in the house that you like stylistically. Then all of a sudden one day you're like, I wore this or like right. like <laughs> it's like it's still hanging or it's still you still wear it and and you like transition out of that right. as your aesthetic and you're like, what was I doing for all these years? I think that's what happened collectively with freestyle music. Everyone's like, all right, we've kind of had enough of this. Are we still listening to this? I still like. I still like some of it. I like the stuff, like the Egyptian lover stuff and the Africa Bambada stuff. That's a little more like robot vocoder voice. Yeah. over. De- that's the stuff I still like. These are very melodic. The stuff with the singing and stuff I'm not as into. But you know who loves it is that guy Tommy, um, who I'm also a huge fan of on Instagram. Tommy from uh, Car Guys or Car Dudes, whatever the f- show's <laughs> called. What? What's that show? <laughs> Google Car? Tommy Car. See what comes up. Tommy, wait, 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 go down. Tommy Capu, is that him? No, that's not him. Tommy, uh, the guy, wait, uh, Pimp, I, I could tell you how to find it. Google Tommy, take it east, E-A-S-E, and it'll come take right up. Yeah. Yeah, big time Tommy, there he is. This guy's awesome. Oh, my God. He's very extra. <laughs> Every video is playing freestyle music. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, that's the old school way. Take it east. Take it east. He's the best, dude. I love this Take guy. Take it east. I, I, we, that's, you've heard Take it east, right? Uh, I don't know if I ever heard it until Tommy. Really? Big time Tommy. Oh, yeah. I've heard it. But then again, I, I, I'm from Staten Island. <laughs> I love this guy. I lo- yeah, I think this guy, he's either Jersey or Staten Island. But so, so she gets her name on the package for a certain amount of time. She gets five grand. And she gets, what do you think a year's worth of whatchamacallits is, one a day? I mean, she'd be dead <laughs> by 2021, right? Nothing against what? Except, nothing something against tells Uzi me Uzi. these things will keep if you don't <laughs> eat them right away. <laughs> no, but I mean, what, what do you think they consider? It's not one a week? That's, that's no, not it's fair. probably one a day for a year. So she got 365 bars. Yeah. bars. Yeah. You, what happens if you eat a who's you what's in a day for a year? Nothing. Nothing. What, what happened? I already do it. <laughs> in other forms, right? What do you... Yeah, I mean, people eat ice cream every single night. You want to do the Who's He Wants It challenge? No, I do me? not. No, well, I do not. Who's He Wants It every day of the year? No, I do not. For the, ca- <laughs> for the calendar? I'll do the hoagie challenge. I'll eat a hoagie every day for a year. No, you can't you, do that. You think I can't do it? I, it I know on. that you can't do that. Why? Because you're not understanding what that means. You're going to have a hoagie 365 <laughs> days in a row? Yeah. As much as I believe in the I hoagie. I think you would transform y- yourself. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to give you a chance to back to, to beep 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 back out of this. Wait, what? Because you're, you're throwing down a gauntlet right now. I don't think you want to get into. Plus, there's no way to verify. Although there is, I would need video of you eating a hoagie every day. Wait, in what and way we'll would I? A 365 day supercut of you eating a hoagie, <laughs> only on the Patreon, and that'll be a big payoff. That's like a two hundred dollar tier. And which? <laughs> Wait a minute. And then we'll reveal what you look like. Which way? <laughs> From now think- on, we'll put you at a blur for 365 days, and then we'll reveal you. I bet you you could do it as long as you were smart about the other meals. You could I do know, it. but that's the thing. You can't be that smart about the other meals that much. Like, it'll the hoagie will consume your life. You'll be making plans around the hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, I got to have my hoagie today. I didn't have my hoagie yet. What's going to be on my hoagie? I can't eat that. I already had the hoagie. Like, and a hoagie is a hoagie. Like, a hoagie is a big piece of food. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to be sacrificing lunches and breakfasts all over the place. I would see. Sorry, dinner and breakfast. I'd shove it to dinner most of the, on most days. Okay, so what are you saying? You're saying that I'm saying I start the you're day You're saying right. that breakfast and lunch will be will be uh, unaffected. I'm saying I, you, I'm, so, I'm saying I start the day right with with some hydration, some water, <laughs> some healthy fruit in the morning, maybe a salad for lunch, and then after I do my day, days of the year? I do a hoagie dinner. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you can't do that 
You can't do so, Why? So You can't just hydrate and eat berries for, for a year so you can have hoagie dinners. And then also, you're sacrificing a year's worth of other real dinner foods. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to shift your fried chicken to lunch? But here's the thing. You would be you're, you're you sh- would be bad. You're that, undercutting the sodium. Like you're undercutting the hoagie. You could do a cheese hoagie one day. You could do a tuna hoagie one day. You could do a roast beef hoagie one day. You could do a low sodium ham. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Like you're you're All looking right, at this as straight up. Days. You're looking at this as straight up prosciutto salami <laughs> hoagies every day. No, not anything you want on bread. You could. Do, there's low sodium option. Yeah, but you're gonna just low sodium option for a for 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 a few solstices. <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying you do a you, you you work in a few low sods, and then you do regular sodiums too. <laughs> what? So you n- still let out to medium sodium. Yeah, Is but that that crazy? I don't know if you should be eating processed meats for hundreds of days in a row. <laughs> but people eat lunch meat every day for lunch. People at large, right? But not people like. It's, it's, that, to get in front that, of cameras. Me or is that insane to sustain? The sustainability of eating a hoagie every day for a year. I mean, we'll make it interesting. You want to do something where we see if, like, the listeners want to, like, uh, put in a money pot? Okay? How about this? I'm making this up. I don't even know if it's legal. Okay? <laughs> There's a pot that they contribute to once we start the Patreon. Or maybe not. We'll do an independent, <laughs> an independent auditor from Coopers and whatever. Right? We got one bank account where people bet that you'll do it and one bank account or like a, not a bank like an account like a, like an escrow account or whatever <laughs> where people bank that you don't do it and then the second you lose or win everybody in the other bucket gets the cash payout divided by the amount of contributors did i just do something real or is that like insane what i just said Wait, what do I get? You, <laughs> I thought that money would be for me if I did it. <laughs> yeah, but you just you you said you would do this before I even mentioned this. I know. So but you the more just you're, you're, you're giving a pretty strong argument as to why I shouldn't do it. Yeah. So and now so you're talking would, about okay. raising money okay. and giving it to people that have nothing to do okay. with it. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you if you lose, you need a motivator. So if you lose, you get nothing. Good day, sir. If you win, you get 25% of the pot? No, it needs to be more. 50% of the pot? Yeah, but then the people You split that- the pot with the listeners. 50 to you, 50 to them. I mean, it could But then be- how do you do it with different con- Here's the problem with the, that plan. You have to you have There's to gonna tweet be different- your hoagie, a video of you eating a hoagie every day. That I get. There's going to be through terrible things that happen and you're going to be like, "Why is this mother <laughs> Posting him eating a hoagie when there's goddamn missiles flying or something like that. You still got to do it. But here's you the problem. Just put a little You're going to have people like, contributing of a, different amounts a of money. A hoagie challenge, and then they'll understand. <laughs> You're going to have people <laughs> contributing different amounts of money. So if a guy throws in 100 bucks versus a guy that throws in five, he's going to want a different payout. That's okay. It's, it's a $10 entry across the board. So all things are equal. $10 I think, to I enter. Think we upped that, I think pot. we upped that It's entry. going to be a million dollars in the pot that you're not going to do I it. Think we, but that would be good for you because then if you do it, you'll win $500,000. I think we upped that entry. I think I think it's 20 I think you buy in at 20 Period. I think there's a rate. For at which a year-long f- bet, it's $20. That's insane. <laughs> okay. So it's 20 bucks. It's a long-term bet, except... What if you make it like? See, this is the thing. What would be the what would be the point at which you've gone so far that you're suffering but refuse to give up because you've already done the damage of like, is it like six months? Like, you, would you bail? You wouldn't bail in the eleventh month. I don't think you bail in the tenth month. I don't think you bail in the ninth month. Mm-hmm. So, if we're trying to do like Vegas odds for these people, you feel like you're in the clear after you make what? Maybe the eighth month mark, or do you think you could go eight months of a hoagie every single goddamn day and then stop? I'm telling you, this will really make my year if you if we if we pull this together. What can I do to help you? You can let me think about it. Okay, maybe you no. You know what we'll do? You know what we'll do? We'll we'll make a a. You could just upload it to to no pressure. We'll make it like a DeRosa Hoagie challenge. Day one, day two, day three, and we'll put up 
every single this way it's not a tweet it lives on the network so people can find it more and get involved more okay. maybe there's a sliding scale because you got to get you can't just bet twenty dollars whenever you got to bet twenty before it begins but what if you're six months in would it be ten dollars to enter at that point no you can't I got to talk to a bookmaker beep them but we'll talk about them and All right. if they want to sponsor us maybe they'll sponsor Joe's wait wait so okay I know we have to get to the today's battle <laughs> yeah. Usually, companies define a year's supply based on the assumption of regular daily or weekly consumption of a product. For instance, a year's supply of Ben & Jerry's is defined as 52 pints. Oh, those one for each cheap week. bastards. For the Starbucks K-Cup giveaway, a year's supply is defined as 52 10-count packages. All right. I'm still thinking they're going to give us 365, but Lisa M., or if anyone knows Lisa M., <laughs> anyone knows her, we want to know how long a year's supply was. It's got to be one a day. I mean, come on. She named the thing. Do you want me to do this? Should you be? It should be a six month hoagie challenge. <laughs> I'm also fr like, I'm just, I don't, because I, I also want to make it within reach. So it's interesting. I think six months is probably a more doable thing. Well, it definitely is. It's 50% less time. <laughs> it's not probably right. a more doable thing. Right. The but the probability I think, is wholly on your side. I think it's attainable. I think it's attainable. Tell me what you think is attainable. And we'll go from there. All right, I'm gonna have to go off when I when we go off air. I'm gonna have to put put some thoughts. You're gonna do paper. like some calculations. Yeah. So next episode, we'll come back with a potential no, challenge. No, 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 laid not out. next episode. We're recording the next episode five minutes after this one finishes. Right. I need give Don't, me a couple shh, days. The magic. <laughs> <laughs> give me a couple days to go think about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> all right. Well, then I guess this is gonna be a teaser. It's a. It's I'm saying. But this is this is something yeah. we're talking about. We you know look, we've given a pretty nice tease here. It was born. Well, speaking of which, though, we, we try to bank episodes in case we can't get together and whatnot. It was the pandemic. It was all that stuff. But now we actually are up to speed. Yeah. So like this. Oh, are we? We are, right? So this episode is coming out in a few days. Monday. Okay. Yeah. So we're kind of yeah. up to that point. You're seeing this the Monday after the Saturday we recorded it. And then the episode the following Monday, we will have recorded also today. And then... We're going to have to record some more episodes. And you just keep guessing based on, our, <laughs> yeah. based on our socks and beards. Okay. Yeah. We're going French fries versus onion rings today. Yeah. Uh, that's the battle. I mean, look, these are all-time uh, great sides for your burgers, for your hoagies, for your cheesesteaks, for your chicken parmies. You know what I mean? When you go to a spot that has sandwiches, these are usually the two choices, and one of them isn't always on the menu. But they are so commonly associated as the side with a burger that even Burger King and a handful of other fast food restaurants offer onion rings as an also a choice. I think Arby's might have them. Uh, I think uh, Carl's Jr. has them. Now, look, we also know going into this, we were like, we, all, we also agree that tater tots is probably the best fried potato side. To me, there's nothing better than a tater tot. It's a hash brown patty in bite-sized form. It's amazing. It's so good, it doesn't even need dipping sauce. Like, I won't... When I dip tater tots in ketchup, I like it less. Yeah, I get what you mean. You know? I, I just... It's so good on its own, man. It's just so good. And, of course, uh, tater tots founded by F. Neffy Grigg. Oh, okay. And right. Golden Grigg. What names... Golden they must be Greg. from, like, Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Leftover slivers of cut-up potatoes. Well, you found it, boys, girls, gals, F. Neffy. Tater Tots were born in 1953. That's wild. Okay, but so we're not including Tater Tots in the debate. Here's the thing. French fries, French fries, if we could name five powerhouse foods of all time, you got up there with your pizza. Your, French fries are up there, so we know well, wait. what a formidable opponent French fries are. We know they're a heavy, heavy <laughs> favorite. But we said, what can we put up against fries? And there was debate as to whether fries should just go up against another powerhouse food or should stay, tr we should try to give them an opponent that's in their lane. And because onion rings are so amazing, we said, why don't we take a flyer? Maybe they have a, punch a puncher's chance against a French fry. I think that I, I I would disagree with the powerhouse comment about French fries. Really? Well, here's why. They're like the number one by far side. In sides, I would say they're powerhouse. Okay. I don't I think it's unfair to put them on the same list as pizza 
or something you would eat as a meal. Usually See, French fries are not eating it. I mean, maybe some poutine up in Canada, but, you know. Uh, but, you know, most of the time, you're not getting fries as your meal. It's not like your I gotta main I got to be honest, thing. dude. I bet you if, you if we did something like a Civil War, like fries versus cheeseburger, or something like that, or like, or even if you say, F it, fries versus pizza, I feel like fries are one of the all-time powerhouse foods. They're a powerhouse food. They're just not an entree food. They're but a, I they're, think they can beat an entree. They're a pick-at-the-table food. Yeah, but... How but, many times have you ordered... The, I mean, I know there's people out there that are going to disagree with me heartily. How many times have you actually ordered the basket of fries with nothing else? How many uh, times? You know, it's more like younger at a diner, drunk food, that kind of thing, or if I'm not that hungry, or if they bring over a basket for the table. But no, I'm not... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know that, but you know? but 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 no, but no one's arguing the merits of where it belongs on the table. At what course? It's just the, it's just the merits of how addicting they are and how much people love them. And in that instance, I think you put them up against any other powerhouse food. I think they're going to beat any food that's not another powerhouse. I think you got to have your what, best. What is it? The Axis powers? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really Axis feel like. Evil? Yeah, I just feel like they're an Axis power. The fraud. Uh, I mean. Yeah, I mean you're you're drifting a little back into M and M's or candy bars territory right now, but I, I, I hear no, no, it. I'm not all I'm pick. saying is I'm I, not going to pick. All I'm saying is like I'm judging them as strictly as a food, as a bite, as as a, as a food, not as what box they check in the in the in, in coursing them out or aside. Is it they're going to go again? People, I mean, I'm just saying like I don't know what would ever beat them. So I'm wondering at the end of this, that fries ever come back and we just do something like insane like that and just right. put it up against something as big. Right. So obviously Sal is team fries. No, I was actually just... No, but I'm saying... That was like really... That was a really, really, for me, like nonpartisan viewpoint. No, 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 yeah. I'll take fries. I'm going to take fries. No, I know you're taking fries. Yeah, because downstairs you you were like, let's do... Uh, you walked by me like Cool Hand Luke downstairs. <laughs> yeah. You you did and 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 I and I laughed. You go, what are you laughing? I'm like, oh, man, just that you just were you really you really confident. It was like, no, go, it wasn't. Do, no, not that you're not going to win. I'm just saying it was like I really liked it. You were like, let's do uh, fries or onion rings. I'll take onion rings, and then you you slapped me twice on the shoulder and kept walking. I I, 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 <laughs> I was like, oh okay. <laughs> I I I didn't. Now I did not mean for that level no, of confidence. I, I don't. But I don't really was, mean that was it in an a accident. bad way. I, I, I I'm know. celebrating it. I know, folks. You know that we love cereal here at the Taste Buds Podcast. It's no secret. We talk about it all the time, and it is also no secret. That one of our favorite cereal providers are the wonderful folks over at Magic Spoon. That's part of your day, breakfast. Most important meal of the day, breakfast. One of the most things, one of the most beautiful things about being a kid, breakfast, cereal, Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, yeah. Sitting there with the box of the fun stuff to eat. Why was it fun? Because it was delicious. It had colors popping out of the bowl. You're watching your favorite shows. It's an experience. It's a ritual. It's something you hang on to. But you get older, you got to cut down a little bit. I'm, you are selling me on this. I mean, it's a it's a great product. It's I a know. great product. I, I eat cereal sometimes for any meal. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to just be breakfast. That's what I'm talking. I about. I came back around. That's what I'm talking about. This is the point now, though, because you're coming back around. You're eating cereal now. You need it to be a little bit healthier. Yeah, if you especially if you're doing it every meal. Magic spoon, zero grams of sugar, thirteen to fourteen grams of protein. That's insane. Only four net carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories. Keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, GMO free. Build your own box. Make custom boxes. Flavors are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry. Cinnamon. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it, it is. Make, it, they're good flavors. Make and your own bundle. Yeah, you can make your own bundle, which yeah. I like. Yeah, I like that you can pick a bunch of stuff that you want, and they'll send you a bunch of boxes of it. That's how it works, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's 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 basically how the, how you the a trade it. a fair trade market yeah, works. <laughs> you order it and pay them, and you will get goods yeah. received. But and that's the magic spoon guarantee. <laughs> but. You can get yourself a deal. So go to magicspoon.com slash taste buds and grab a custom bundle of cereal. Try it today. Trust me. You're going to use the promo code when you get there. Taste buds. That's your promo code. And you're going to check out and save five bucks with your order. Magicspoon.com slash taste buds. And then use the promo code taste buds to save five bucks. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. What is honey? You guys know about honey yet? Honey is an app. 
We all shop online. We've seen that promo code. Uh, that is so funny. Right. We've seen the promo code taunt us at checkout. Do you know that when I shop online, which is often, and there's a promo code, it says apply discount code, I abandon the cart and I go on a search yeah. for promo codes all the time because and it's telling me that they exist. And every single time I get the same exact websites and they all give me codes that are expired and do not work. I, I the agree. End of that now with honey. And what really bothers me about the taunting of the, I, it, it is funny that they phrase it that way because it does feel like a taunt because it feels like the store you're buying or the company that you're buying your product from is letting you know, we could give you a discount. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If only you could figure out the codes. <laughs> it's very insulting. It makes me angry. Yeah. Uh, you which, are not getting the best deal right now, yeah. just so you know if that box yeah, is left yeah. empty. So we love that Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. They range from all kinds of sites that, you know, tech products, gaming products, which I'm excited about, uh, to popular fashion brands, even food delivery. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites, and when you check out, the Honey button just drops down. And all you got to do is click apply coupons. It's not like you have to go to the Honey site and find the code or whatever. The button just gets installed in your browser. You click it. It adds the coupons automatically. It may be the biggest no-brainer of all the ads yeah. we have. It's like yeah. you just it's there, and then you just save the money. Yeah. takes a few seconds for them to search, but they're going to apply what they find for you. And, uh, you know, look, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten free shipping out of out of honey and it's just it's i mean or you know through using honey i should say but uh that's huge that's huge because sometimes you know look folks i buy on a budget i'm not gonna lie to you i'm a thrifty kind of guy i'm a i'm a i'm a window shopper i price compare okay and it's the only way to be sometimes when you buy maybe a few things you want to treat yourself maybe a few blu-rays you'd had your eye on that you don't necessarily need but you want you justify it some by sometimes by going okay there's the total, sixty dollars and twenty three. Still buying Blu-rays. Yeah, I buy Blu-rays. Okay. I like to own my media. Okay, but you're looking at that total. You go sixty twenty three. I can live with that. I can live with that because I just found sixty dollars under the couch that I didn't know it was there. And then you go to check out and you get hit with that shipping, and it's a whole different ball. Oh, game. shipping tax, honey, babe. That's if what you, you need. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. By getting, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Uh, I'd never recommend something I didn't use. That's true. I, I downloaded Honey the first time we got it. I've been using it ever since. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash taste buds. That's joinhoney.com slash taste buds. I will say I do have a certain security in picking onion rings because onion rings to me, in theory, could be the Kit Kat of this poll. It could be the thing that we had no idea was going to sweep, and it did. Uh, onion rings, I'll say this. When they're right, they're amazing. I agree. And when, they're an, when it's an option to have them, I always choose them, almost always over fries. I have fries that I love. I have fries that I worship. McDonald's fries. I've gone on and on and on about them on this show. To me, they're on one of the best things on. I've ever tasted. <laughs> she just keeps on. Uh, what song? But. On and on? Yeah. Isn't that Paul Davis? I don't know. That's some yacht rock right there. I know the song. I don't know what it's called. I didn't mean to stop you. Please That's go. That's okay. Please go. But when I'm just in a regular old diner, and I love a regular old diner, don't get me wrong, most of the time, I will, if given the option, I will take onion rings over the French fries. Me because too. I find quite often, man, when French fries suck, dude, they suck. Suck. They do. I hate those big dry steak ones. Yeah. When they're not done the right way, it just feels like you're eating chunks of dry potato. Yeah. And a lot of times, diners default fry is a steak fry. Right. Right. Uh, but then you can't discount the hundred other fry options. But I'll let you continue. I also choose onion rings when they're available over fries, and I'm still really going to defend fries. All right. Well, I mean, look, both have great variety. Both have great variety where you you're, where onions, it's not even a cheat. Where you it's think not onion even a rings cheat. have great variety? Yeah, just like with a French fry, how you have a steak fry versus a crinkle cut versus a shoestring. Versus a curly versus a right. waffle versus, yeah. you know, uh, a dirty, like a, like a cut, like skin on. Yeah, versus all, all 
variations of the same thing, but that but each version sort of changes it up just a little bit. Yeah. Onion rings, like any battered food, there's all types. There's the straight up like kind of Italian breadcrumb style onion rings. There's the full on battered ones where it almost tastes like a funnel cake mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or a fried dough on the outside of it. My personal favorite, and I don't know what it's called, are like those ones. Uh, uh, second, second picture in from the right. Sort of. Keep scrolling. Pimp, go to the top again. I think they were at the top. Oh, there they are. Homemade onion rings where it says all the way on the right. Up uh, those. When it's uh, like that, okay, okay. I don't know what that is, dude. Like, I don't know what, the, when they're like that, I'm like, oh, yeah, here we go. Um, I, I love, I love onion rings. They're great. I love them. They're great. Here's where I think you're going to find your problems. Fries, the reason that people like us opt for an onion ring when the choice is available is because of the scarcity of the onion ring's availability in general terms in relation to the fry. People have been eating fries by default our entire lives. Mm -hmm. And so it's a welcome change. Mm -hmm. I think if you flipped it, I don't know if you'd be able to eat onion rings every day like that. I think people would feel differently about onion rings if they were the automatic side to every sandwich in a diner, every every triple decker, every every cheeseburger. If if onion rings, I, I don't know if we'd feel the same about them. They... It's hard to consume a lot of them. I've done it, and uh, they're really, really high in fat and calories. Yeah. But like, but if they're also if they're done a little greasy, like the first couple of bites are great, but then you're really you got a lead stomach. So, but you feel <clears throat> you feel you could eat French fries every day? No, whether I mean I, I might come up with I'm, another challenge of my another <laughs> challenge of my own. Whether I whether we're, I feel like we're trained because it is the go to side or that they are just a little more palatable and edible on a daily basis than onion rings I think is also true. I think they're both fried but like onion rings have this way of keeping in the grease and the juice in between the batter and I mean uh, you know obviously the best the most perfect one yeah but I'm just saying I I I don't know man I just like fries I want to know which you could you could say you could right now you could speak for like f- five uninterrupted minutes about the onion ring and I might agree with everything you say and then when you're done speaking and you say now you defend fries I almost just have to go you know they're French fries <laughs> you know I what I mean find, like they're just like I find it's they're hard. French fries I mean I, who's gonna beat them I find like Floyd May- Mayweather <laughs> I find it's I find that the 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 average. I find that on average, the chances of running into an underwhelming French fry is far greater than running into an underwhelming onion ring. Well, because just for the sheer amount of fries that are available at all times, well, so it's, yeah, and people they yeah. might not even have any rings, and they'll have like th- at least three fry options. Also, oh, you want sweet potato, you want curly, you want sweet potato. Also, we didn't even talk about. I'll sweet say potato. this too about onion rings. As a matter of fact, I think I take a sweet potato fry. Over every other fry. Maybe a, even a sweet potato curly. You ever see them combine those? You need to get out of my face with that. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're fine, but come on. You'll take a sweet potato fry over a regular fry. I'll tell you where I did. That's like, nuts. A crinkle cut fry reminds me of at home frozen fry. Mom making them for dinner. They're the best. Burnt on the pan that comes out of the oven. Steak cut, I, I relate to a diner. Well, I guess the curly fry really. Like the Arby's. waffle fry and the curly fry are the kind of same, but I think the curly fry. Is really where it's at, the curly fry. I think crinkle cut is your greatest French fry of all time. <laughs> because of the crisp? They're just so good, dude. And Del Taco's French fries are, are crinkle cuts, and they're so good. I mean, they're insane. They're so good. I don't know. I think the crinkle cut, unless they're burnt and my and my mom made them, like that, out in the pan. Like that I, or the I, shoestring I, fry. Shoestring is so good. Yeah. But I'll tell you this. Um I think, I, I, and this is another pro for the onion ring. If you sat me down and you said, listen, dude, we're not going to be able to eat for hours. You're starving. You got to pick something to eat right now. You get fries or onion rings. I'd take the onion rings. Why? I feel like it's a much more substantial meal. And that's, that's even more like, nutritionally. I feel like you can dip. You're getting onion in it, which is nice. And then I feel that you can dip the onion ring 
in the types of things that real foods get dunked into, maybe a ranch dressing, a honey mustard, even a barbecue sauce, dare you. Uh, yeah, but- French fries, to me... You know, well, you well, could say all day you dip them in mayo, whatever. Get out of here. You dip them in ketchup. That's what you dip them in. I, I, I'll dip a fry in anything except mayo. I don't even like mayo, but whoever wants to dip them in mayo, be you. But all those other things, you're like, you can dip them in things like honey mustard barbecue. Of course you can. That's well, not no, a I'm revelation not you to me. Can't, Every one of those things I'm that not you can dip you, a fry into. I'm not saying you can't. I mean, you could dip a Hershey bar into those things, too. What I'm, what saying, I'm saying is, is like, the way the flavors of those dips lend themselves to the onion ring, the way they mesh. The onion ring has an almost chicken tender flavor to it. <laughs> and these dipping sauces, it allows for a more substantial, robust uh, experience. I know you love that word, robust, but here's yeah. the thing. yeah. <laughs> All of those dipping sauces go as good and complimentary with French fries. So that's a wash. I disagree. I How disagree. so, Joe? <laughs> Here it goes. You thought it was going to be pleasant today, didn't you? You thought it was going to be pleasant. There it is. That was where it started. No, no, no. But how so? I, I don't like name- because a French fry is just a potato. You're just dipping a potato into that. It doesn't have the. It's a golden fried, crispy. I I understand. Just like the onion ring, in the same vein as the onion ring, it, and you could dip them in I'm honey mustard, saying- barbecue, sweet and sour. As a matter of fact, that's not- what people dip them into. I'm not saying that you can't do Mayo, it. Mustard, I'm not saying ketchup. that I don't do it. When I go to McDonald's, I get a 20-piece McNugget, and I dip the remainder of my fries into the remainder of my sauce. Whatever the sauce may be. Yes. And it tastes delicious. It's very good. But I'll tell you this. Had I an onion ring, I'd feel like I was eating more McNuggets at that point. I feel like I was extending my meal significantly. So your, your, one of your arguments for the onion ring is that it tastes like a chicken nugget? I think it's got a more substantial flavor to it and a, and a hardiness and a weight to it that the French fry can't compare to unless you dump cheese sauce or gravy and bacon all well, over Well, we didn't even things. go there. Truffle fries, Parmesan fries, disco yeah, fries. Sure. Yeah. We didn't even go there. Chili fries. Yeah, I'm not yeah. even, I don't even really need to go there. I- Sally boy, we both wear glasses. Yeah. I like a stylish pair of specs. Then you're going to want Warby Parker. I know. Stylish specs at an affordable price. That's not even their copy. That's coming from my heart. That's coming from his heart and mine. They provide exceptional vision care online and in stores with Warby Parker, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. And these things are starting at 95 bucks a pair, and that includes the prescription lenses. You can get your sunglasses, your progressives, the blue light lenses, anything you want. It's available. You go to their website. You take a quiz. They're going to send you this home try-on kit, and you try on some stuff, and you see what you like. Yeah, they'll send you up to five pairs, and yeah. then you just just you can choose whatever you like. You just see how they look, how they fit in. You don't have to worry about going to a store. I do remember the first time I started wearing glasses when it, when it was years ago, and I got my first pair. I didn't realize how expensive glasses were. Mm-hmm. Like, they were like 400 bucks, 500 yeah. bucks, and I was like, wait, yeah. how am I supposed to? And then you guard that pair of glasses with your life. Yeah. And then it's like, it's also like the selection wasn't great, but with Warby Parker, when I found them, was like, wait a minute, there's like, Tons of cool styles, and then 95 bucks they start at. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's when I started, like, buying more glasses. I True agree. Story. I agree. Going into yeah. the to uh, going in to get your new pair of glasses, I mean, man, you were in there for hours trying Because that's, the, that's the glasses that were going to be on your face that was it. For the, until they got yeah. lost or broken. Yeah, so it's nice to have an option where you could get, if you wanted to, three pairs for the cost of what one pair usually costs. Or just get one pair and save yourself some money. Uh, try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Again, you're going to order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. See what looks and feels best, okay? And that ships free to you and includes a prepaid return shipping label. And here's how you do it. You go to warbyparker.com slash taste buds. That's W-A-R-B-Y-P-A-R-K-E-R.com slash taste buds. I like Gavin. Yeah, you like Gavin. And you know what I like Gavin about? What? Car insurance. Oh, babe, then this is for you. Tell me about it, Gabby Car Insurance. Yes. When it it comes to car and home insurance, don't we deserve better? We do, and I know I do. I put my policy to the test, and I turn to Gabby. And I know you deserve better, and that's why I pushed you to turn to Gabby. Do you know that it literally stands for get a better insurance? I didn't. I really didn't. I'm not doing a bit for the ad. (laughs) I didn't know that. Uh, (laughs) That's incredible. I love it, but who knew something like this even existed? There is one true comparison platform with real rates, and that's Gabby. They're going to give you the apples-to-apples comparison of your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like, you know, Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers all in one place. Let me tell you why this is such an important service to utilize. 
Uh, I got a new car recently. I hadn't had a car for the first year or so that I, that I was living back in New York. And when I bought a new car, I had to get insurance. And the dealer that I bought the car from gave me all the quotes. And the quotes seemed high to me. Of course. And then I went going. and sniffed around on my own and found out that I got, I was able to get insurance from one of these reputable companies that has already been mentioned uh, for about a third of what I was wow. quoted from the dealership. It's huge. I wish at that time I would have known what Gabby was because it would have saved me a few headaches. But the point is, is here they are. We're telling you about them. They're, they're helping customers save $961 per year on average, and they're never going to sell your info they're, 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 you know, to spam or robot callers or anything like that. So don't worry about it. You're safe. They're going to help you out. This is a great service. Just use it. Just use it. Why not? It's it's just a win-win. You're just comparing and getting the lowest price. So it's a tool that's really going to help you. Put your policy to the test like Joe wishes he did and like we certainly are going to do for the next time we got to get... Actually, my mom got a new car yesterday. There you go. She just got a new lease, and I got to call up for insurance for her. I'm going to use Gabby. And her name is Gabby, isn't it? No. Oh, well, that would have been... That would have really worked. Get it would I mean that would have been lights out. I wouldn't think I would have brought that up sooner. <laughs> Get a better insurance with Gabby. It's totally free to check and there's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash taste buds. That's G A B I dot com slash taste buds. Gabby.com slash taste buds. I feel be the a little reason unfair I'm so calm is because like I feel like I, I don't know. I just feel It'd be like a little I, unfair I'm, I'm defending fries. Here. Right, right, right. Right. But um What about a bloom and onion? If you're going there, I'm going into bloom and onion. I'll give it to you. But I wasn't going to really, really and then go I'm also going to go into onion strings. You I'll give wanna, it to you. Don't open it up. I would give it to you. Don't open it up. No, you don't want me to open it up. Don't open it up. You don't want it. But you, chili but fries, cheese fries, str- chili cheese chili fries, f- truffle fries. That's my so, point. So fr- but that's my oh, point. Is your- how about my favorite fry accoutrement? Malt vinegar, my friend. Boardwalk fry. Malt yeah. vinegar. But my favorite thing to dunk a fry into. There's nothing that beats it. I find it fish utterly chips, disgusting. Boom. Uh, fish right and malt chips vinegar. to me is an abomination It's like a, a Heinz malt vinegar like or a classic. Ugh. You don't love that? That's so well, gross. What do you mean? Oh, my God. We agree that salt and vinegar chips are the best chip. I love that. How I don't dare like you? Ma- I don't it's like the exact malt- same food prepared differently. I don't differently. like malt vinegar on a fry. I don't like it. It's too, it's too robust. <laughs> but you're saying that salt and vinegar potato chips are your favorite chip yes, of all time. Yes, but that doesn't We agree, taste- hands down. Those- and you don't think that a French fry Listen, dipped in malt vinegar is good? Know, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, Sal, so, with flavors of potato chips. The flavors on the chips don't really taste like exactly like the thing in real life. Vinegar potato just tastes. I like- know, but it tastes like it tastes like a light white vinegar or something. It doesn't taste like malt vinegar out of the bottle with a fr- It's too much for me. Pungent, baby, I love it's it. It's too pungent. I can't. Okay, do it. but I'm just giving you examples of fries. I want to go back a moment, if you will. The first occurrence of French fries in America may have been at a diplomatic dinner hosted by Thomas Jefferson. They did say the fry was invented in around 1775, and the onion ring, just for facts, was invented in about 1910, 1920. Right. But if I'm given an option, uh, if I'm given an option, French fries were invented by, another one was French fries were invented by street vendors on the on a bridge in Paris, I'm not even going to attempt that name. In 1789, just before the outbreak of the French Revolution, however, the reference exists in France from 17, 1775 to a few pieces of fried potato and to fried potatoes. Okay, all right. So 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 they were made in France. But here's the thing: um, if I was someone was telling me you're going to have only one, you're not going to eat till later on. You could eat French fries or onion rings. Go go back to that. It's it's definitely French fries. French fries no, are not. an Onion is a vegetable that has no calorie count within that vegetable outside of the fried batter around it. All right. But potato is a hearty natural carbohydrate. Have you ever heard somebody say, have you ever heard somebody say, I didn't, I'm starving. I didn't eat enough onion rings. No, you're full. You're full after you eat onion rings. I'm I'm just, you know, it's like, the hell are you talking about? I love when you do those quotes. You're talking about like, like you're talking about it like you're eating like raw lettuce or something. No, but no one's ever said, I'm, I'm hungry. I didn't eat enough onion rings. No, of course I've never heard that. No one's said that. You say the same thing. You say the same thing every time. I ate too many onion rings. I feel sick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I see what you're saying. My point is, yeah, but you say the same about fries. It's it's substantial is my point. It's not empty calories you're eating. To burn off calories in a medium order of McDonald's French fries, you would need to do 58 minutes of cycling 
90 minutes of bowling or 45 or 47 minutes of high impact aerobics. I don't believe it. Off a medium fry? I don't I'll tell you right that. now, I'm going for 90 minutes of bowling. <laughs> what yeah. moron? Wait, how are those even equal? You're telling me those are three equal buckets? 47 minutes of high impact aerobics or another 40 extra minutes of bowling? I don't believe that. That can't be I right. mean, I agree with you on the bowling thing. But I, do you agree with that? I think these things are nonsense when they say stuff like this. Well, they're giving, they're giving an exact calorie count to an exact burning of calories. So if a medium fry, McDonald's uses 7% of potatoes grown in the United States for its French fries. They sell more than one-third of all French fries sold in restaurants. You won't get any argument Whoa. out of me. McDonald's fries are king. Uh, wow. But we're not talking McDonald's fries. Do they fries. have a, an onion ring McDonald's? No. Why? Uh, I think, I don't know. I was going to say because Burger King does. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. It's a burger shop. Well, usually they steal from one another, but they didn't. But did you see the little fact about Burger King? That there's an onion ring in every order of Burger King fries because they will be, because they are letting you know that they also have onion rings. They do it on purpose. That is genius. I never knew that. And I always, you always get that loose onion ring. Brilliant. It was on purpose. Where'd you hear that? Wait, is this when is this? McDonald's is adding onion rings? Yes! 2021 is kicking off with a bang with the announcement that it is finally adding onion rings to the menu. That's right. McDonald's will be serving individual onion rings as well as two new burgers. I mean, what are the I new burgers? See what they're going to do with the onion rings cuz can I be honest with you? Can I be honest with you? Look how good those look. They look like chicken oh, nuggets. That's what I was saying. They did them different. They it's the chicken nugget batter. They had to do them different than Burger King. And what I was going to say when I was asking you if I could be honest with you, and please let me know if I can. I'm listening. Yeah. I don't think the Burger King uh, onion rings are good at all. They're some of my... They're very unfortunate. I always get it. I always want them to be good. I pop them in, but they're like forgettable onion rings. Right. They don't They don't give me the... They don't, get, they don't satiate me. Like when I'm looking I, for an... When I really want an onion ring, it's not the best... It's uh, because it's like onion meal. It's like chopped up onion. Is it's it? It's not a full piece of onion. Okay. And that's why they're not great. But I will say this. I still get them a lot of the time at Burger King over the fries. I still enjoy yeah, them. I don't different. dislike I them. I like the taste, but, but yeah. not, they, don't, they don't play like a, the onion ring I agree. old. I agree. Yeah. I agree. What were the new burgers, Mike? Eating parsley would help you get rid of your onion ring breath. Who knew? Who's walking around with onion ring Just breath? Awesome. You. Oh. All right, that's stupid. What but do you mean, mean who's, who's walking around with onion ring I'm breath? Saying like, Anyone who eats onion rings. Onion, but I'm saying el- onion rings, it's just a weird, it's a weird spe- specificity. It's like I get onion breath, but to say like, how do you get rid of onion rings breath? It's yeah. Like, you know, well, I don't know, it's weird. Outback's, oh, <laughs> what? Outback Steakhouse is blooming onion, blooming onion. How? Oh. <gasps> I just saw the ending. It serves six, but it's it's meant for two. The yeah, ending, no, that doesn't serve six it's people. It's 1,948 calories, and if that isn't enough, Outback Steakhouse's Bloomin' Onion is 160 grams of fat. How many grams How is, is that, that even for your possible? day? How many grams is that for your day? I, I, I think you're supposed to have, like, I don't know. Is it, aren't you supposed to have, like... Let's see, 2,077 grams of fat is in 2,000 calories on average. Wow. So that is two and a, over two wow. times. Holy shit. Over two times your daily intake in one shot. <laughs> well, if you eat a whole Bloomin' Onion by yourself. Whatever happened, I forgot what happened to what's his name in Super Size Me. No good, right? He, he gained a lot of weight. And, yeah, and yeah. You mean the, the moron that eats McDonald's three <laughs> times a day for 30 days? He gets sick? You know? Yeah, talk to me, Mr. Hoagie Man. Yeah, well, but I mean, that's <laughs> different. Hoagie every day for 365 days. I mean, if you ate lettuce three times a day every day and that's all you ate, you would get sick. You know what yeah, I mean? It wasn't it's not like, like a fair me- comparison. Yeah, it's like, it's stupid. The highly adverse effects included severe headaches, depression, severe mood swings, 18 pounds weight gain, chest in, in one month. And by the way, he goes chest palpitations, high cholesterol, and eventually even liver 
failure. He gained nine and a half pounds after just five days of eating super. And by the way, he he goes he goes completely batshit every time he goes. He goes in, he gets like the quarter pound, the double quarter pounder super sized, well, and then nuggets with it. It's like, he, dude, he needed to. You're going like full tilt here. It's like nobody's but, saying but when you should be go doing to this. McDonald's or go to fast food. If they don't go all the time, they usually go full tilt. But you can't say that's your rec- daily. This is my point. Yeah, it's yeah. like who's doing that three times a day? But just think about every you, day. Think about what you just almost committed to with the hoagies. <laughs> it's oh, once man. a day. But for three hundred and sixty-five days. But I. But but I listen, mean every day, like Bastille we Day. You're about, eating a hoagie. We, have, we haven't talked about size yet. We haven't. Talk, you know, all these things factor into it. Okay. But what that guy did was the equivalent of eating a fifteen-inch hoagie every day, every meal. I'm gonna do That's something crazy. I'm gonna do something that I never done before. When we are done, I'm getting fast food today. Yeah. I can't talk about this. I'm craving it now. Yeah. I, I want know. onion rings bad. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm defending fries. I know, I know. I kind of want fries, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a switch real quick. First time ever. <laughs> Let me tell you why onion rings are better. I want French fries from McDonald's really bad right now. There's a, there's a, I wonder if we should call right now, live on the air, the McDonald's down the block, and be like, you got those onion rings yet or what? Are they out yet, Pimp? Let's see right now. Sit, Hold on. Pimp, search McDonald's onion ring release date. Eat nothing but French fries for 26 years. Years. I mean, it's just what I'm saying. That's 26 years this person did it. I, you know, I'm, I can't do hoagies for six months. How, how is it possible? Wow, that's crazy. I've never even heard of something like this. Why is she crying? How, how is it possible, though? <laughs> Can you just live off potato? I mean, evidently. What about all the... I mean, she... How, Boy, these kids are not fat. A teen went how? nearly... Look at this. A teen went nearly blind due to his love of potato chips and french fries. Jesus, a one-sided diet is never healthy, and you can never live off of it for very long. Again, that was my whole problem with Supersize Me. Anything one-sided, you're going to get sick. He could have done that movie about Ben and Jerry's. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, dude, nobody told you to eat it three times a day. There's not, there is no food item that could be used solely without any other food item since your body needs all nutrients. Let's, 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 let's see what's going on here at the, <laughs> at the Mickey D's. I mean, if you think they're answering a phone at Mickey D's, you're insane. <laughs> It's ringing. No, it, yeah, they have a phone. But what do you think happens? It's more like a suggestion or a decorative item. Really? Yeah. A decorative item? Yeah. Really? You think I'm going to get a recording? I'm, I don't even think you're going to get that, but let's just see what happens. I mean, come on, guys. What are they doing? They're just looking at each other while the phone rings in there? They're running around like lunatics making quarter pounders. You ever seen what behind the counter? But this Mickey is not, there's no dine-in at this one right now. It's nuts behind the counter at a Mickey D's. Not, I mean, you no the flow is the flow of the flow of uh, ordering is streamlined because it's only the drive through. So I th- I think they I think they're short staffed. I don't even think they have they're running running around. Oh this is bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, let it be known, McDonald's corporate they don't answer the phones. It's probably corporate telling them not to answer the phones. They go. Do you it's know what kind going, of lunatic going, would call a McDonald's? Going, but it's not going to a recording. Which makes me feel like they're just busy, and someone will get to me momentarily. Why? What, what? What about no recording makes you think that? Because it's wild to have a McDonald's, a corporation like that. Is, are they franchised? Yes. <laughs> no, like so. So yeah, yeah. So they, yeah. So each, e- but each McDonald's, but not every McDonald's is a, is franchised by an individual owner, right? Yeah. Really? So how much is a McDonald's? I, 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 I can't blame them for not picking up the phone because I just think, who, what could anybody be calling to ask? But this is outrageous, no? Do you, Does anyone else find this outrageous? No. They don't have, like, a corporate stock answer machine, like, welcome, McDonald's. For corporate, press one. To hear this, press two. For the menu items, press three. Like, so, so you're telling me that there's just a bunch of wayward teens in there? Yeah. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be completed. Listen to that. It went to Verizon Wireless. That's a cell phone number you just called. Wow. All right, let's go to the polls, pimp. We may or may not be back with French fries and onion rings. Yeah, French fries are going to kick your ass back. <laughs> Uh, Fr- French fries. Hey, I, babe, I, I love onion rings. You never had a shot today. I don't you think. I think you're going to be. I think we're going to be surprised. We didn't get too into the 
the nostalgia and the and the feel. I of think they're going to be surpri- uh, of, of French fries and onion rings. I think you're going to be surprised. I think you're going to be very surprised. That's what I think. That's what my gut's telling me. Talk Let's, to me about ratio. I think it's going to be close. You think it's going to be within ten percent? Yeah, because I think the passionate people about uh, onion rings are going to go hard in the paint here. That's what I think. Here's where I think you might have a, a chance of it being closer. I don't think you have any chance of winning. Is that I think what you said. I think people are going to be like, oh, onion rings. If I had to choose, I'll choose onion rings. I'm sick of fries. Something like that. That, that kind of misinterpretation. But we do write which is better. Oh, but then again, which is better? Yeah, but fries. fries my, but my assessment is, is, that, is that this will be a surprisingly close race. Fries are foods at large's best friend. You know what I mean? No. They are the accompaniment. They are the willing and able accompaniment to nearly everything. You could have a steak, steak frites, babe. You could have a steak with fries. You could have a club sandwich with fries. Mm-hmm. You could have fries as their own meal. You could have fries as a Dude, drunk the, food. The, who, what are you, you talking about? Fries you know how many side? steaks I've ordered that come with onion rings on top of them? Great, I know. But yeah. I'm just saying, you could, have, you could have fries at every meal. But they, onion rings on burgers. Nobody's putting fries on the burger. They, there's places in the park. No, nah, they are putting fries on No, them. barbecue burgers, they put an onion ring on it with barbecue sauce. I know, sauce. but there's those, there's those burgers that have everything on it. They, they, you that's, could do it. But that's not why the... But my, my point is the fr- a fry is the Swiss Army knife of foods. A fry <laughs> is the man's best friend, is the, is the canine of foods. A fry is the, is the wingman of all foods. Okay. It is the most versatile... Ready, willing, and able, and complementary side to the most dishes possible across the continents. Okay. Even in other lands, fries reign supreme. I just don't see what... Look, it sounds very similar. Fries need to go up against a powerhouse. It sounds very similar to my Snickers bar arguments. Okay, and no, Kit Kat came in swinging, no. and I think we're in a similar situation here. I don't know that I'll win. I think it's going to be a lot closer than you think. I think. Let's see what this, some of the people. Have I to think say. this is going to be bad. No, stop it. So just give Here, me, stop give, it. me you, give me a, 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 a give me a five percentage ratio, ratio window. You think you, you think I'm winning? I think we're looking at maybe a sixty five, uh, thirty five, sixty forty. Maybe even a 55, uh, 45. I mean, you reduced by, t- you reduced, you went all the way down to 5%. I'm thinking like somewhere in the 60 to 40 area. Okay. I don't think it's going to be a landslide. I think it's going to be closer than you think. Okay. Okay. Well, I like onion rings and all you people that like them. That's Good on you. For you. And I like French fries and same to you. I think we're going to be more of like an 80 20 scenario here. No way. No way. Let's see. I want to see what some oh, of the people I would have loved say. to, you know what I'm, we got to do? We got to look at what our, bi- our smallest and biggest win margins were and we wanted to do the uh we got to talk about the record yes we'll we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out we're going to come back with, with, with yeah. who's because i don't know do you know if you, your record's better than mine no i have no clue no idea maybe we could ask the fans no idea <laughs> or, or <laughs> we could just look it up yeah we'll look it up okay here we go <laughs> uh a little humble pie segment here we go here we go we're gonna see where these things netted out humble joe thinks pie. it's gonna be 55 45 i think it's gonna be 80 20 which i think is the biggest disparity we've ever had in his terms of guessing Holy oh shit. wow! Holy wow! Shit. Yeah, there you have it. Decisive. Holy shit! Seventeen thousand two hundred votes. <laughs> French fries seventy five point three to onion rings twenty four point seven. And I thought it was going to be even higher. I thought it was going to be even higher. Joe, you shouldn't even feel bad. You shouldn't feel disappointed. You know. I don't understand. <laughs> please, please speak. Let it all out. Let's just read some comments. I'm at a what, loss for what, words but, right now. No, but are you? Yeah. Do, I'd love to know what was going to follow. I don't understand. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Okay. I'm literally at a loss for words. At the at the disparity of the loss. Yes. I can't believe it's that wide a margin. Well, if you really boil it down, And buddy, then the first comment I saw was f- French fries <laughs> dipped in a Wendy's Frosty. I hate that argument so much. I hate Wendy's Frosty so much. I whoa! Wow, that's crazy. You're in the minority there. French fries in the Frosty. I don't know why what it is, but people love it. But can I just tell you something? All this is is one in four people prefer an onion <laughs> ring. I mean, if you really want to boil it down, yeah. I mean, you know, fifty-fifty would be two and two. It's just one in four. 
<laughs> who do you think is picking what? <laughs> Joe on your rings 100%. <laughs> that's a great tweet. That is great. That's our winner. That's that's our winner. That's that's Someone did a poll about who's picking what, and they actually got it right. That is amazing. 100%. That's really well, funny. Well, just she's the only one who voted on her own poll. Oh. Oh, still, it was funny. I'd rather shit in my hand and clap twice than eat onion rings. <laughs> All right, retweet that guy, too. Is that a saying? I don't is know. That, is that like funny. a Uzi wants it? Did she just make it up? Yeah, I think so. I'd rather uh, shit in my hands and clap twice than eat onion rings. That's got to be a saying. Follow. That's got to be a saying. At quit quite, quite frankly. Frank, or at frankly quite. Oh, is that something that this thing does? Quite frankly, I'd rather... Is that like the like the whole point of the? Uh, it's the winning tweet of the Ep City out. <laughs> this poor kid. Let's read some more. Folks will defend and brag on how onion rings are superior, and also throw away the food tray, which with a whole stack left. Okay, onion, onion rings, rings are by an ogre. <laughs> And I know that Joe will side with Shrek on this one. He's got some weird layers. <laughs> Listen, Sal, I love you, but pipe the f*** down about the onion rings. This is an absolute trouncing for French fries. But William, you didn't even know which one I took. Uh, if we're all talking, if we're talking all kinds of French fries, I assume there will be an argument. But let's just say we are. Waffle fries will destroy any onion ring. That's not true. Waffle fries are some of the driest of all fries. Uh Isabella is choosing who the winning tweets are now. She's got some real monsters. Is she the one that put the poll? Yeah. All right, Isabella, Stripper. calm down. Stripper of it. <laughs> Just kidding, Isabella. Thank you. This is wildly disrespectful to French fries. What are you trying to prove with onion rings? You can only fry a vegetable good for you. Wow. Uh, only onion rings I'll eat are Funyuns. Do you listen to this shit? It's no debate. French fries over onion rings. No one wants their breath to smell like it ate the ass of a skunk. Uh... I mean, I, I haven't found a pro onion ring yet. French fries are the DeRosa of the culinary. <laughs> French fries are oh, the DeRosa right. of the... This is actually a compliment. Go, you read it, babe. The French fries are the DeRosa of the culinary world. They go well with everything, the whole world around, improve everything they are added to and make a delicious meal on their own. Onion rings, much like Volcano, are at times delicious, but often too greasy. <laughs> oh, but a greasy disappointment. disappointment. <laughs> That's great. Although, isn't this person quite the egg? They have egg on their face because I took French fries and you took onion rings. I know, but it just was a nice. They said nice things about me as a person. <laughs> oh, I can't okay, wait to there hear you go. Barry T gave you some love. Where? Right there. French fries, people just mindlessly shovel into their face the same way you do with chips or popcorn during a movie. The onion ring is for people who actually want to taste what they're eating. Thank you, Barry. Wait, can you go back one other thing? I can't wait. I can't wait for Joe DeRosa to make the argument that onion ring onion chips are basically French fries and therefore onion rings are better because <laughs> you get the best of both worlds. Uh, he might have went there if we let him. Oh, boy. All right. Babe, this was a very uh, civil debate today. It was. It was a very... Was. You know, part of me just felt like I, I, I didn't have to do much heavy lifting with the fry. And so we, we diverted because people also like when we start to talk about other things and stuff. I agree. I think it was a, a fun matchup. I think it was, I think onion rings at 25% is still admirable. Uh, I think that French fries has to fight another day against a powerhouse. All right. And give it some real competition. All right. Maybe there's an, maybe there's fair competition for the onion ring too, that it actually could stand. Against. How about an onion? You know what would be nice against the onion ring? The potato skin versus the onion ring. You know what we should have done was onion rings versus tater tots. That would have been a better. Uh, but if you think the tater tot is the best fry here, but people at large, that might have been a nice battle. Yeah. More specific. I more still think you go potatoes. Did we ever do potato skins? But they're not a could... side dish. Yeah, you're right. They're more of an app. Yeah. All right. All right. Well. I still love you. I love you too. Plugs? Uh, We'll see you in hell. Available wherever you get your audio podcasts uh also uh new episodes on the patreon patreon.com slash wsyih podcast thank you i think taste buds fans are coming on to the patrons our numbers keep going up over there um the patreon oh to europe the other patreon yeah Got yeah me. so check that out and uh then that's it for plugs for me this i week. know we say it but we're, we're, chris is getting home soon and the no pressure network will launch the Patreon yes. very soon. Yes. Sal Volcano Comedy for any dates that I'm going to put up. Uh, the No Pressure Network. One thing to ask. You guys are liking it. 
um, the only way that the show can grow is if you spread the word for us. So if you can tell a friend that you think would like it, retweet it, rate us, share, all that stuff that you always hear people ask, it's because it makes a difference. We're loving doing this. You're loving the show. Help us out. Share it. Blow it up as much as you can. And we'll keep doing Taste it. Buzz. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic, I'm talking taste buds.